Hey everybody, welcome back. Northern Land plays the Binding of Isaac Afterbirth Plus. Uh, we should not have won our last run, but we did. How about that? This one, I'm not a big fan. TWDV B3 VB. Um, Spider Butt is, is probably, I say this sincerely, one of the items I underrate the most in this game. Um, it's kind of, it's weird, like, over the years I've gotten, like, more at peace with the Necronomicon. But a weaker Necronomicon that you can use three times as frequently is like, oh, no way. <laughs> it's it's not amazing, but it's fine. Um, but the, the real kicker here, I don't think you need me to tell you, is uh, 1.07 speed? Come on, man. How am I supposed to go Sanic fast in that pot? No, it's, it's 18 rate of fire. You, you already know that, but I'll, I'll tell you again, regardless. It's gonna, it's gonna keep us down. Uh, 18 rate of fire. That's about, like, it, it's not exactly half, but it's, like, close to half of what we'd normally be expecting to see. Um, ooh, dude, that's a, that's a great situation to have. Okay, you get a bomb. You use the bomb to blow up that one uh, rock that allows you to get to two bombs. Use one of the bombs to get yourself, like, 12 cents there. Then you can go to the shop, and w once you go to the shop, I mean, the world's your oyster. Any Anything could happen from that point onwards. Actually, you know, ah, dude, there's a, that's a good bomb situation there. That's a good bomb situation. We might even just, like, if, if we can reverse this, we could go to, the bomb, uh, go to the shop and buy a bomb first if we had to, but obviously that's not going to be uh, necessary. So I, I do see the Tinted Rock. Rest assured, I see the Tinted Rock. Here's the flowchart, and this is really, like, and I'm not saying you have to be that incredible at Isaac to figure this out, but this is what separates, you know, the, the novice Isaac players from the more experienced Isaac players. You gotta run the flowchart early. You use a bomb to get two bombs. What do you do from that point onwards? I... I think you get money first. I think you get the money first. You drop this one in right here. Takes us to 13 cents. You do drop this one in right here. That's another uh, 9 cents for a single bomb. Might seem like a heavy cost. But then... My lord. We got 22 cents and you know, by the grace of Edmund we also have a key. What are you doing here? I was hoping to buy a bomb. <laughs> oh, but the two of diamonds is pretty great. Uh, let's get one of these just for safekeeping. And you know what? I think we can actually buy Nightlight as well. Um, just to give us some kind of value early on. Bomb. Bomb. Okay, we got a bomb for three cents. Uh, and then we will... I mean, we could use... There's just so many different ways to use this bomb. I would say a Tinted Rock is probably the, the first best way. And that's exactly what we wanted to see, quite frankly. Um, from this point onwards, we'll probably just move it along. This is this is a really, really good setup. Uh, and it, it all happened because we got that one bomb just randomly dropping, dude. Pretty sweet. Anyway, um, we, we do need uh, another tiers upgrade as quickly as possible. But apart from that, everything's like absolutely... On the level, I got I got no complaints, except for our you know still pretty bad rate of fire. But as long as you ignore that, everything's kind of like you know we're cooking here. Probably should not be uh, playing Monstro this close to the chest. <laughs> what can I say? I also like to live dangerously. There you go, not so bad. We'll take it and move along. Dude, we still have an arcade chance on the next floor as well, which is pretty sweet. Which is pretty sweet. If you're looking for anecdotes, you've come to the wrong place, officer. I am anecdoteless. You know, we're recording this at about 10 in the morning, a little bit after that previous episode we just did. Nothing much going on. Just an, Just another nice late October day. Would love to see an arcade to take advantage of that right there. Because now, <clears throat> to be honest with you, we do need a speed upgrade. <laughs> Small rock is great. And, uh, you know, 0.87 speed is not, like, unusable. But creates a situation for us that is, like, a little bit 
you know, we, we've got some negatives associated with our myriad positives. Yeah, I hope everybody else out there is uh, doing decently, all things considered, in 2020. It is crazy that the year is, like, almost over. I, I mean, I'm not trying to scare you, because I know when you hear that, it's like hearing, like, Hey, how was your Mother's Day? You know, you're going to be like, what? <laughs> It was Mother's Day this weekend? No, it was not. Well, I don't know, because, like, UK does Mother's Day a different time than the rest of the world. I'm not going to hate on it, you know, because that's how Canada handles Thanksgiving. We do our Thanksgiving at a different time. I, I've, I've used to try to justify it, you know, why is Canadian Thanksgiving different than American Thanksgiving. Now, I, I've stopped justifying it because I no longer want to... Um, Subconsciously, unconsciously, etc., etc., project the belief that, you know, the American way of doing things is by default the normal. You know? Why do we do our Thanksgiving up here in October? I don't know. Why do you do your Thanksgiving down there in November? You know? Why, why, not, why are you the ones asking the questions, never the ones answering the questions? You ever think about that? I've gotten out of your way for too long. I'm not putting up with it anymore. Okay, we got... Secret room access. I'm I'm most proud of the way that I placed that bomb like exactly in the right spot. <laughs> Getting something out of it is secondary. The fact that we placed it in exactly the right location to get the secret room is is the real money maker there. Well, um kind of a waste of our time here, but you know, it is just goes to show you I am here, you know, trying to do the little things right. What is this again? It's strength, right? <clears throat> if we're not going to use algae's on the boss, we should use we should hold strength just because it might give us a free deal with the devil. Um, because we have 3 HP, it's unlikely it would give us a free deal with the devil, but it's definitely possible. You know, we would just need to get one of those like 1 in 10 deals with the devil where there's like four items available. Oh, dude, I was just gonna say, <laughs> getting something like this would really hit the spot. Now, technically, this is a great boss to be fighting here with the uh, spider butt as well. Um, technically, we could use Guppy's Paw to make strength more likely to give us a free deal. And we'd be getting some spirit hearts out of it in the process. And also, we'd be able to access that mob trap room, but I think it's kind of a... The juice ain't worth the squeeze. I just got a nice tweet that rolled in. If you, if only you knew... Oh, well, it just got pushed off the screen. <laughs> hold on, hold on. You're, you're worth it. Even though it takes our HP quite low, <clears throat> you are worth it. But here's the tweet. If... NL only knew how much my 65-year-old father and I enjoy watching him play Fall Guys every day. Love seeing my old man getting so pogged. That's that's where we're going to click the heart button and say, Keep it up, lads. I'll try to get a crown for you. How about that? That That's just wholesome right there. Um, <clears throat> give me algae's here. I don't have a dry cough. Honestly, like, right before I started this video, I swallowed some coffee down the, the wrong hole, and it's just kind of chilling in there. It's just, it's just, it, it's set up shop right in my uh, epiglottis. No amount of peristalsis is able to push it down, unfortunately. So we, we do have a delicate run, and we kind of, I mean, we did it to ourselves by taking Little Brim. But Little Brim is is a very nice hedge. Uh, we, we do want to do it. Uh, Little Brim is a very nice hedge against having a poor rate of fire. <clears throat> Sorry, it's a coffee cough. Um, it, it gives us a lot because we don't actually have to wait for... Uh, we, we do more damage with it than we do with our own tiers over the same amount of time that a charge takes. So, you know, that, that may change, and eventually we might not be, like, you know, particularly enthused by it, but its existence right now is extremely positive. And, dude, left hand drastically improves our chances of, of getting the 270 electoral votes required uh, to get Guppy here. Sorry, I mean the three items required. 
Got a little politics on the brain, apparently. I can't imagine why. Uh, somehow, on slow enemies, I've gotten myself hemmed in. That's a little embarrassing. Yo, rune bag, so good. You know what? I'm, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. We're pogging. My schedule is like, is so twisted up right now. You know, I actually found myself, and, and I think that this is embarrassing just because, uh, you know, there, there's no reason with a newborn you should expect to be able to keep some kind of consistent schedule. But I, the other day, I actually found myself, like, I was mad at myself because I woke up at like 10 a.m. I was like, man, I slept in. I lost like most of the day. I didn't really sleep in. I just happened to, you know, like you go to bed at 10, you wake up at uh, 11.30 to feed the baby. Then, you know, your wife wakes up at 2 to feed the baby and you kind of wake up simultaneously. Because, you know, I'm not, I'm not saying she's making a ruckus, but it just makes some noise to begin with. And then you wake up at 6 to feed the baby and change the diaper. And, you know, like, you're not getting the greatest sleep in the world. But it's crazy to me, like, now it's 10.22. My brain feels like it's about, I would say, like, 2 p.m. Like, my brain is craving a, a foot-long sandwich right now. It's not craving bacon and eggs, toast, a croissant. It's like, you know what I want right now is, is a foot of cured pork products and on a, on a baguette. It's absurd. The newborn has no respect for, for circadian rhythms. I guess it's because, you know, she developed in a relatively lightless world. I guess, actually, that's not true. The fetus can react to, to the stimulus of light, apparently, in the womb. I wouldn't know. My, my memories of being a fetus are, are kind of shoddy at best. Unreliable, I would say. <laughs> at the very least. I don't know if we want any of those. Blue map is, like, okay. But I, I don't necessarily think it's worth the money. Like, I, don't, I I think it's worth the cost, I should say, but I'm just not sure if it's worth the opportunity cost. It's a very nice message to receive, though. It's just so, like, don't get me wrong, I, I, I'm happy with any audience that I can get. So I, I hope that this doesn't come across as offensive, but there's just something much more... <laughs> it just feels that much better. When somebody that's 65 years old is like, I enjoy this content. You know, I, I, I wouldn't say that necessarily, like, the older someone gets, the, the better it feels. What is this, algae's? I mean, it will probably year of the shop, I guess. Um, but, you know, when somebody is like... It, it's weird. Like, I, I'm trying to think of the best way to, to say this without uh, offending as many people as possible. Or if I have to offend them, at least offending them in the funniest possible way. Um... But it's like, if somebody's like, eight, and they like your content, you're like, thank you. But also, you're eight years old, what do you know? You know? And that's not to say, you know, you don't have content preferences, but, you know, I wouldn't necessarily use that as like an indicator of like, oh, I've already seen that! Of like, oh, I'm making the kind of stuff that I want to make. But I will say, if someone's like, you know, 25 and they watch your content, that feels about the same as somebody who's 65, you know? It's just... It's not like the older someone gets, the more validating it is that they like the content. It's more just like, you know, hearing somebody has gone through some real life, you know, experience in their life and is like, hey, that content that you make is fun. That feels good. It feels good no matter what, don't get me wrong, but I hope I got my point across slightly. Look, I'm not saying I wouldn't love to cultivate an audience of, uh, you know, adolescents. Honestly, like, they're probably one of the biggest demographics on YouTube is people who lied about their age because you have to be, like, over 13 to make an account. It's, a, you know, imagine if you're, like, a Fortnite YouTuber and you, like, look at your analytics. You're like, I have a lot of 80-year-olds. <laughs> I have a lot of people who said their birthday was January 1st, 1900, uh, that, uh, that appear to be watching my Fortnite builds. Well, I guess I've got, uh, generational appeal. 
But I don't think that's the kind of content I, I make in the first place. I think I, I, I make, I, you know, I, I, I think that it has some broad appeal. But it's more targeted at that, I was gonna say young adult demographic, but I guess it's not really a young adult demographic anymore, right? Like, I still get called young man, but it's only by people who are old as dirt. You know, you, you get called young man as a man, probably from like the age of 10 onwards. But like, the proportion of the population that will call you that diminishes greatly as you age. Like, no police officer would call me young man anymore. If I was in university, they might be like, excuse me, young man, you can't do that. Now they'd be like, sir. <laughs> Once you start getting called sir, that's when there's real consequences to your actions, I guess. Excuse me, young man, get down from there. You'd be like, oh, crap. Excuse me, sir, could you come over here? That's where you're like, oh, no. <laughs> I'm going down. Anyway. I'm, I, make, I make content for... Uh, for sirs, not for young man. There's no need to be down, I said, young sir. Pick yourself off the ground, I said, young sir. Anyway. Forgot what I was talking about. You remember the first time you got called, like, sir or ma'am? I remember um, in high school, I had a friend who worked at Old Navy. And she freaked out one day. Because she was like 17, maybe. We can buy both. Uh, dude, I think we're going to get guppies. So I think that's worth it. Um, and uh, she worked at uh, she worked at Old Navy. And somebody called her ma'am one day. And I was like, you know what? I, I understand. I mean, it's just kind of like a nice way to refer to somebody. But you definitely like... I mean, if you saw like a... 13 year old that you needed to address you would not be like ma'am you know you would be like excuse me I'm the adult pay attention can't remember the first time I was called sir it still doesn't fit right you know like even even though I'm I'm getting older when I get called sir on an airplane, it still, it, it, it makes me want to fight, you know? It's like it's dripping with sarcasm. Excuse me, sir, what kind of drink would you like? Oh, I get it, just because I'm sitting back here in coach. You gotta treat me like a piece of meat, huh? Still feels sarcastic any, anytime anybody calls me sir. You're gonna live in a butcher shop? I had to treat you like a piece of meat. You know what? That's for, that's from the Mandelbaum episode of Seinfeld. Yera. Oh, Yera. I'm not afraid of Yera. Strength. That's actually a good time for the strength card. Um, this run, by the way, everything is copacetic. It's just a little bit slow. It's all gonna come together, I think. Oh, we were just sitting right next to the item room this whole freaking time. We just, okay, that's very nice, although our rate of fire is going to be truly abhorrent for a bit. Um, I think we're going to peep this real quick because we're desperately hoping there is a guppy item. Okay, mission friggin' failed. We got a penny out of it at least. Got to be a little, a little cute with this one. You know, when we pass AWAS, we should uh, take AWAS, or use it, I should say. Doesn't benefit us later. We're not getting the boss rush. Let's be realistic. Okay, didn't get anything special out of that. It, it's a little spooky. It, it's spookier than I would like. Because I think, like, the last run, I just played badly. And when things started to kind of slip away, even though we did come out with the dub, I was like, this is fair. You know, it's my own responsibility, and I, I kind of blew it. This one, I'm like, I think we're actually playing a good game. Um, I just I just happen to also think that uh, we might be missing the kind of like rate of fire and or HP that that we need, but we really are not off by much. By the way, do you think we've got enough ways to slow enemies down? <laughs> Spider butt, nightlight, little gish. 
Like, we're a little over the top. I kind of want both, but, but Toothpicks is going to have just a, a catastrophic, but in a good way, effect. Like, there must be, because catastrophe, that sounds like an old Greek or Latin word. Which, to me, indicates there should be, like, a, like a, a flip side of it, right? Like, you, if, to be catabolic is to be in a state where you lose muscle or lose mass. To be anabolic is to be in a state where you uh, are, are cultivating mass, as Mac would say from It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. So is there, if there's a catastrophe, is there like an anastrophe? <laughs> I'm not thinking of an apostrophe, okay? Hold on, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to Google it. Anastrophe. Dude. An anastrophe is a figure of speech in which the normal word order of the subject, verb, and object is changed. What? So it's like how to speak like Yoda? That's not... I mean, it, trust me, that's a happy accident that I googled that. But uh, it's really not what I thought it would be. That's pretty wild. It's also like... Uh, I mean, it's how a lot of languages are, I'm sure. But it's how, like, Korean is as well. Like, instead of, uh, you know, I eat the apple. This is always the example people use, but instead of, like, I ate an apple, or I eat an apple, you would say, like, you know, I apple eat. Which I'm trying to now, I'm like, does my Korean allow me to do it? It's like, Jonun Sagwalul Mok, Mokta, maybe it's Mokta? Mokheo? Anyway, I did my best. Korean speakers, let me know how I did out there, okay? Look, I'm gonna tell you, it's not an expression I use that much when I live there. I eat the apple. I used a lot more of, uh, Kwa Jung Shi Lodi Ayo Juseyo. Um, Mian Hamnida Hanguk Mal Moteo. And, uh, a little bit of, uh... Uh, Chogyo! Uh... Namabiru Hito... Wait, that's Japanese. <laughs> Hold on, um... Make you do gay, you say, oh, there we go. A little bit of that as well. You gotta know it for a couple of different languages. English, I've got it. I've got it under control. <clears throat> Regardless. Where are, we, where are we going here? I don't know. We don't have a whole lot of HP. Do I really want to keep Ansus instead of Strength? The answer, most of the time, would be Stone Cold Voice. Oh, hell yeah. But this time, the answer is Stone Cold Voice. No, I don't think so. Because I think that we, we want this deal with the devil. We want the deal with the devil sauce, you know? It's Gish. Um, it's Gish. It's Gish. Unlootable. Like, I don't know. Are you going to be able to give me? Uh, you're, you're probably going to give me a second little Gish, right? That's, that's my expectation here. You don't get little Gish from an item room very often. So this is not a, a super common occurrence. Oh, okay. I was completely wrong for the record, but um, I think we still want more HP. The luck is a nice touch as well. And we definitely, we would be remiss if we put this into rushdown mode instead of trying to find our shop because our shop is going to be, is going to be worth something for us here. I don't think we've been to our secret room either. It's a good time to go. I support it. So yeah, I mean that's pretty much this. But this was what's been going on. Um, pretty pretty normal time for me. Uh, as as normal as things can be with the with a newborn at least. Schedule's a little wonky. I think, like, the the way I would describe having a newborn, like, I've previously described it as, I mean, I mean there's multiple different axes you could describe it across, of course, but, um, you know, in, in terms of, it's not too bad, in terms of, like, uh, productivity, I've previously described it as, like, you know, having a newborn's not that much work, and, you know, depending on your feeding strategy, if you're the father, it, it really isn't, like, it's not like, you know, 12 hours of duties a day. The, the one thing I would say to kind of flip that on its axis 
is that there's like almost a time dilation effect. And I hope this is relatable, but for for other, you know, parents out there. Normally, you would think, like, how long does it take you to, like, vacuum the house? I don't know. You know, it might take you, like, half an hour, right? With a newborn, I would say the amount of time it takes to do a task varies by a coefficient that is somewhere between, like, one and three. So it could take you half an hour if the newborn stays sleeping. But if the newborn, um, you know, if she wants to feed, you know, add in another like 15, 20 minutes on top. If if on top of that, then there's a diaper change. Some diaper changes are like 45 seconds. Some diaper changes are like, you know, five or 10 minutes, depending on the kind of state you find the diaper in <laughs> and the clothes that are behind it. Um, not to get overly graphic. Do, come on, guppy items. Come on, man. What a rip. So there's almost like it is a time dilation effect, if that makes sense. You would think, like, you have, and you, you really do, actually, like, have a decent amount of downtime. But if you ever, if you're one of those people, and this definitely does describe me, if you're trying to, like, budget your time, and you're like, okay, I've got to do this, you know, cooking dinner will take, you know, 25 minutes, and then eating dinner will take 15 minutes, and I'll do the dishes from that, and that'll take, you know five minutes and you know after that you know i'm gonna go log on and pay the electric bill you know that you can throw that out the window doing one household task could take you two hours it could also take you no time at all <laughs> but it you just never know i guess that's the thing that's like i'm i'm a pretty uh like roll with the punches sort of guy for the most part like i i I'm, I'm not that organized to begin with. I'm not that much of a planner. Uh, I do love a routine, so there's there's some stress in there for me. We'll use Yera on the shop, I think. Um, but I, I'm not that much of like a, this has to happen at this time every single day or I'm going to lose my mind sort of guy. I, I definitely like was a little bit more like that before the baby, but... But I, I can kind of, like, regress back into university mode where I'm like, it happens when it happens or it doesn't happen. I can live with that. But uh, I think if you're the kind of person that is like, everything needs to be just so, having a newborn is going to be like, <laughs> it's going to be an, an ex excessively stressful time uh, for you. Is That's my take on the subject. And I think that's why, like, you know, Kate and I were talking, like, don't get me wrong. It's nice having a newborn. I love this child with, with all my heart. Um, but people are always like... Not always, but a lot of people were like... Enjoy every second of having a newborn. You know, it you don't... It, it doesn't last forever and, you know, you, you're gonna miss it when it's gone. This, I expect to be true to some extent. Because you kind of, you know, you miss everything when it's gone. Not to say this isn't particularly special, but I think you know what I mean. People get nostalgic for, like, you know, the old KFC original recipe chicken. So, I, of course, you're gonna be nostalgic for, like, when you have a newborn child, right? Um, we should have yared that. But I also, you know, we kind of find ourselves being like, there are people who describe to us that like having a newborn is fun. And I'm like, you are insane. <laughs> there are fun moments and fulfilling moments. But I, I, I bring this up not to be like, oh, we were sold like a a false bill of sale. It's more like, you know, if you ever find yourself in a situation where maybe you're having a kid, you have the kid, and then you're like, what the heck? It's not all, like, laughter and, like, live, laugh, love, and, like, you know, taking a thousand photos of every single bowel movement to remember it. You know, it's... Everybody's different. I think that, you know, the, the newborn phase... Yeah, we'll take it. <laughs> oh, we have Monstro's Long, though, but this... Wait, it's great. <laughs> uh, the newborn phase... You know what? I think that's actually how you do it right there. Honestly, I think it's pretty easy on me, but I think it's a little harder on Kate because, you know, she especially is, is like, very organized, quite regimented, and also likes to keep a clean house. Which, I mean, who doesn't? But, you know, it. this creates a situation where because she also has, like, a lot of other stuff 
on the go when it comes to like you know the baby duties particularly feeding um you know it's a really stressful time for her it's kind of easier for me because i'm you know i'm just kind of like the understudy <laughs> i'm helping out basically as much as i can but um you know I, i'm not the star of the show for right now i think it'll be a little bit easier um for her once we get into like that toddler phase and, uh, you know, more solid food phase and stuff like that. So I, I bring it up just to, because, like, I, I almost wonder, I've said this before, but, I, you know, on social media and stuff like that, there's always, there's almost, like, toxic positivity, you know? Which is not, it's, it's not as bad as toxic negativity. But when you see all this sentiment of people, like, they're always 100% happy and fulfilled at, like, every single junction in their life, I think it creates like an unrealistic expectation for a lot of people that like, oh, you know, you might feel like you're doing something wrong. You'll be like, you know, my kid crapped all over herself at four in the morning and I don't have a smile on my face. Like, what's wrong with me? No, those people are either built differently, your honor, or alternatively, they're kind of lying. Maybe just due to a lie of omission to, you know, represent themselves in the most fulfilling way possible. Because it's kind of gratifying to be, you know, that person who's like, you know, I, I never get rattled by anything. And then secondarily, I also think that, you know, di different strokes for different folks. I think that, I, admittedly, I've only been a parent for three weeks, so, you know, I have no idea how much this is going to, you know, remain true as time goes on. But I, I definitely feel like, you know, there's different phases that people will enjoy more than others. I'll take a, a rate of fire up, for sure. And we got Perthro, and hold on, this is Alges? I think we'll stick with Perthro for now. Perthro's like, very valuable as you get later. So I don't mean, I mean, I mean trust me, I understand why nobody ever, uh, or very few people ever say like, you know, there's gonna be some times where you're like, I wish this kid would stop pooping her pants. Cause you don't wanna, be possibly like taken out of not out of context but to be like oh you know not every single moment of this is magic i'm here to tell you there, there's a lot of magic and there's also a, a lot of times where you know you're like i don't want to wish time away don't get me wrong but i think i i i do sort of look forward to the day where i'm and it's still early, but where my daughter does not poop her pants, and instead when she has to poop, she goes to the toilet. Like, dude, that is going to be... I don't need a Father's Day. Just give me that day. I'll give up every Father's Day forever. <laughs> In order to just get to that day. That That's the only Father's Day present I need. I mean, I got to be honest with you, changing the diapers isn't even that... It's not even the poop, because I know I said that, like, the... Going into it, I was like, bodily functions don't gross me out. They really don't. Sincerely, I've been I've been vomited on, pooped on, peed on, you know, over the course of the past couple of weeks. It, it that doesn't bother me. The only thing that is annoying, really, is when you're in the middle of changing a diaper and then another bodily fluid comes out on the new diaper. And you're like, excuse me. That's very rude. <laughs> you couldn't have gotten it all out on the first pass. You had to send out like a like a joke one. And then when I start to change your diaper, do another do another one right after. It's just just a little rude is all I'm saying. Speaking of which, so you know, use a lot of diapers for for uh uh perspective's sake. You know, when you have a, a, a one-month-old newborn, they use, like... It varies. I'm not I'm not gonna just give you the upper end. You know, I'll give you the average. We're changing her diaper, like, I would say on average 10 to 12 times a day. Sometimes we've had, you know, 16 diaper days. We probably had 8 diaper days where we didn't know how lucky we were, right? Um, but, you know, you're using, like, I don't know, close to 100 diapers a week. So, we were like, you know what? It turns out the Pampers Corporation has a reward program where that was just not very smart. Um, where you uh, every time you buy like a, a box of diapers and you go through them like in ten minutes, but um, 
it has like a 15 digit code on it. The 15 digit code, you enter it into the app, it gives you some Pampers coins. If you use the Pampers coins, you can get some free stuff from their online store. Okay, we do want it. No, we don't, because we're not going to become Guppy. We, we can't become Guppy at this point. It's, it's too late, unfortunately. Um, so we were like, you know what? We've been using a lot of diapers. We're like peak diaper consumers. Um, Kate gave me her phone and was like, you know, go enter all the Pampers boxes and bags into the app. Spent about 20 minutes punching in these 15-digit codes. At the end of all this, I was so stoked, dude. I'm not even messing with you. I was, like, so excited. We, You know how many Pampers coins we had? 390. Seems like a lot, right? I go to the Pampers reward store. I'm not doing it. We got such a good run. I go to the Pampers reward store on their website. 390 coins. I'm gonna I'm gonna start by not burying the lead, okay? 390 coins is not enough uh, to purchase anything. It is about a half of what you need to purchase the cheapest thing. And what is the cheapest thing? A three dollar gift certificate to the online store, which is already busted because it's cheaper to buy <laughs> the on it's cheaper to buy the diapers on Amazon than it is to buy them direct through Pampers. And I know you might be like, well, we don't stand Amazon. Oh, really? You stand Pampers, though? Okay, sure. I mean, I don't know. Maybe they've got a, an ethical business model. But so essentially, I, I and I'm not saying, you know, like my time when I work is worth something. My free time is worth, you know, squat. So I'm not like, oh, I wasted my time. But I, I did give up. 20 minutes of, of rare free time in order to get about half of one $3 gift certificate that can only be used to purchase more diapers. Now, I know you're saying it adds up. I, I mean, it, it's, well, you shouldn't say it adds up. You should say what the truth is, which is it's not zero. It's true. It isn't zero, but it is like... It's really bad, but at the same time, I'm also like, you know what? I'm not saying like I stand the corporation. All I'm saying is uh, they don't really have to offer a rewards program because it's not like you're going to be like, oh, the rewards suck. I'm not going to buy any diapers anymore. You know, they pretty much got like a captive audience. <laughs> I guess you could move to Huggies, or you could go with some cloth diapers, which, like, to be honest, I'm just going to be straight up with you. You know, I consider myself environmentally forward. Uh, we're not using cloth diapers. If you are using cloth diapers, you deserve probably not a Nobel Prize, but, like, a key to the city, at least. You're, you're making a sacrifice that I'll just admit I'm not willing to make. So, I, I honestly, I greatly appreciate it. I don't know how many, you know, carbon credits I need to buy to make up for the fact that we're using disposable diapers. I, I will be happy to pay for it. Do you take Pampers reward coins? Because I have a supply. <laughs> but yeah, uh, I, would, I would say it's pretty close to the worst uh, reward program I've ever seen. The worst I've ever seen is definitely my grocery store. Um, which gives you a flat rate of one dollar per, sorry, one point per dollar spent. And then every now and then, they'll have a sale that's like, uh, you know, if you give us a thousand points, this loaf of bread is free. And you find yourself in this position where you're like, I spent a thousand dollars on food to get a free loaf of bread? But like, you're not gonna say no, because what else are you gonna do with the points? It's like, admittedly, it's not like an exploitative reward system, but it's like the rewards that they offer are, are such a pittance that you're like, yeah, okay, fine, I'll, I'll take my free loaf of bread. It's, uh, it's disproportionate, let's put it that way. <laughs> like, if you found a, a nickel on the ground every ten times you went to the grocery store, it would probably be worth more than the reward program from this grocery store. 
But then again, there are grocery stores out there that have no rewards program at all and also sell uh, asparagus water. So I, I don't think you need me to tell you who that is. I do also shop there on occasion. It's exclusively because, I mean, come on, the pro... Look, like, Whole Foods is, is so expensive. Don't get me wrong. But the fruit is... It just hits different. I don't know where they source it from. <laughs> but, like, a pear from a grocery store that isn't Whole Foods is like... You're like, yeah, I get it. It's got a smattering of pear-esque flavor. A pear from Whole Foods is like, I don't I don't know what they do, dude. Like, they inject it with, like, extra pear extract or something like that. I feel like I'm in an Herbal Essences commercial every time I bite into it. That might be a dated reference, I'm not sure. Now, every single pear from the store is about $2.80 probably, but... Hey, anyway. Dude, this run ended up... It ended up getting us there. Look at that. That's four wins in a row. We did the little things right. For now, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, click the like button. Helps out a great deal. Of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. For now, thanks for watching. I will see you next time.